Hey there. All right, so in this video, we're going to create a Windows Server 2012 failover cluster on vSphere 5.1. Now, it's not officially supported, um, and really the, the non-support comes from uh, an issue that can come about during validation testing um, when you're using the more traditional method of attaching the storage to the VM using a physical raw device map. Now, this the way that we're going to do failover clustering today is not susceptible to that issue, and it appears we'll be providing support for this uh, very shortly. But basically, we're going to be attaching the shared storage that's needed for the cluster for things like Quorum and, and any shared data. We're going to be connecting that through the guest OS using the Microsoft iSCSI initiator. So basically, the guest OS, Windows Server 2012, uh, living in the VM, is going to be connecting through its virtual network to the storage, directly to the storage. And this can be any storage. This can be a, a large array that's presenting LUNs over iSCSI. In this case, I have a VM I've created. It's called W12 Storage. And I'm going to go ahead and, and create some iSCSI targets there. Um, I'm also going to use that VM for some other testing that I'm doing. So for this video, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, connect the cluster nodes to their storage using in-guest iSCSI. And again, that's not susceptible to the issues um, that are found in the more traditional approach, um, and it, it should be a supported way of uh, deploying Windows Server 2012 failover clustering on vSphere 5.1. Um, any version of vSphere really and um, it, it makes a great uh, it, it, it's a great way to get this set up in a lab um, very inexpensively very quickly so first thing I'm going to do here I'm going to go to the first cluster node and I'm going to make sure that the iSCSI initiator is up and running so we'll need that to, to connect to our storage in a little bit uh, by default, the services are set to manual, so we'll go ahead and click yes here, and that'll set the service to automatic, and it'll also go ahead and start the service. So once that's done, the iSCSI initiator properties comes up, and we can see that you know, the initiator name has been defined. And I'll do the same for the second cluster node. And once this is uh, once this pops up here, we'll just make sure that we have our IQN number there. That's all good. And now we're going to go check and just to make sure. Get a little paranoid sometimes. Uh, just to make sure that the services uh, has in fact started and that the uh, it has been set to automatic. So we see it's running. It's set to automatic. Uh, that's all good. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to this VM that I've created to be my, my storage VM for uh, some of the testing that I'm doing here. And first things first, let's go take a look at uh, what storage is available right now. This VM just has uh, one LUN, a 40 gig virtual disk where the OS is, is uh, sitting right now. And as soon as there's, this refreshes, you'll be able to see that. Okay, so 40 gigs online. No big deal. So we need to add a role. We need to add uh, the file server and the iSCSI target server roles. Now, if you select iSCSI uh, services, the file server role will be added automatically. And so that's just going to take a minute. So while that, while that runs, uh, let's go ahead and add a virtual disk to this VM and I'm going to do this while the VM's online. I can hot add devices uh, through vSphere. And I'm going to give it five gigs. Uh, we don't need a whole lot. I'm just, I'm just going to use this for, for Quorum just to test uh, the validity of this configuration for the cluster. And it doesn't really matter where we put it. Then provision it. And that'll be good. Um, that is pretty much added uh, pretty instantaneously. So we'll go ahead and rescan the storage and we should get a uh, offline volume with no partition. Alright, that's good. So we'll go ahead and bring this online. Right, now 
I'm not really sure what that warning is. Uh, I've had that happen a few times, but I know that no one's attached to this disk because I just created it. But I'll troubleshoot that later. So nothing fancy. I, I don't really care about the quick format. I don't really care about the volume label. Um, I don't care about the allocation unit size. Uh, it's just for testing. I just make sure we can see that. All right. So that's all good. Let's go back to this guy. So the installation's done. All right, we have our roles there, our features. And that gives us our the iSCSI uh, menu option here. All right, so we have the option to kick off the wizard, so we'll go ahead and do that. And pick the E drive, that's where we're gonna house our, our iSCSI virtual disks. We'll give it a name. I'm gonna use this one for Quorum, so I'm just gonna make it real simple. And a gig. A gig is sufficient for that. And we have no iSCSI targets, so we're going to go ahead and create a new one. I'll give it a, a name. I'm just going to name it the, the host name and iSCSI target. It's good enough. And now we can add the initiators that we want connecting to this guy. So obviously I have two. I have my two cluster nodes. So we'll go ahead and add those guys. I don't really type that fast. I sped it up just for the sake of uh, getting this video done. So, so that's all set, and if we go to the E drive, we can see a folder was created, and we can see our uh, virtual hard drive, hard disk was created. And you have a few options here, but uh, we don't need to worry about those right now. So now we have a disk. We have a target that we can connect to. I'll refresh real quick on uh, the cluster one node and we'll see nothing's there. So I'll go ahead and uh, type in the host name for my target and we see that it connects. It can see the, uh, the, the name of the target and the IQN number and we're good. So let's go see. Disk Manager should show me some love and it does. So disk is offline. No partitions. And so we'll do the same for uh, the cluster 2 node. And we should see the same thing. It's connected. All right. So that's all good there. So we'll go ahead and uh, go back into Disk Manager and see if we can get this guy formatted and online. And then we can go about validating our cluster. And so that's pretty small, so that, that gets created pretty quickly. It's formatted. Um, just going to open it up here and maybe write a little file to it, make sure that uh, everything is good there. All right, so that looks that all looks good. So we're accessing the volume from cluster node 2. Cluster node 1 still has it offline. That's perfect because the cluster validation is going to be bringing this on that volume offline and online on the various nodes. Um, a few times over. So we'll go ahead and uh, do validation. And I'm just typing in the names of the nodes that I want to run validation on here. And you know, really, through validation, I'm going to run all tests. Uh, and that's going to include storage tests, and I, 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 that's really the one that I'm concerned about here. Um, but through the validation wizard is how Microsoft de determines uh, supportability of the cluster, right? There used to be the whole uh, Windows Server catalog that you had to test every, or make sure that your systems were all listed in. Uh, this is the really support criteria. And at the end of this, we'll get a nice report and it'll either be all green or maybe some red, like that. Um, so I have some issues going on with my network configuration, and so which is fine. We'll we'll take a look at the we'll take a look at the report here, and I'll I'll talk to you a minute on on why that's red and how you can avoid that. So the report here will actually give you details around everything. But look, my storage was successful. All right. The only issues I had was in uh, in networking. 
So we see I had a, an issue with the IP configuration, the network communication. Um, basically, if you are going to be running a Windows server failover cluster using in-guest iSCSI, uh, one of the best practices is to have dedicated virtual network interfaces for that iSCSI traffic. Uh, even better, you would have a dedicated VLAN. So you would have virtual network adapters on the VM connected to a port group or a, a dedicated virtual switch um, on the uh, ESXi host at the vSphere level. And that would in turn either you know, plumb back to a, a separate isolated network or a separate VLAN, uh, maybe with some QoS or whatever the case may be. But the point being is that if the valid cluster validation sees that all of the traffic is supposed to go over a single interface, you're going to get this error. Um, so on these VMs, I only have one interface just for the, for the sake of the, of the test here, um, really more so showing the storage side of things. Um, but that's basically what this, what this is, is showing here, and that's how you would avoid that. Okay, so at this point, um, I can close out of this, right? And I can finish the validation and I would be able to go ahead and run through my cluster and get my cluster created and uh, everything would be kosher. All right, so, you know, and this, this isn't necessarily something that needs to only be done or can only be done in a test environment. Uh, we have many customers and I've, I've heard of many configurations where this is the approach now, going in guest iSCSI, um, and, you know, it's some of the benefits are, of course, that you have, you know, your LUNs are dedicated to the VMs themselves, similar to RDMs, right? Um, but you're also able to take advantage of uh, some of the VSS backup tools that are available. And uh, lastly, being able to exceed the 255 LUN limitation that's present in, uh, in ESX. Well, I hope you found this helpful, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.